Good afternoon, it's Dr. Lewis, and I'm going to talk you through the differences in the findings of hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism. Further down on the table, we're also going to look at treatment modalities, some emergencies, and then what the names of the autoimmune forms of these disorders are like. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow the logic. Because my thing that I always say with endocrine disorders, first of all, you need to know what the hormone is that's out of balance and what that hormone does. So we know that hyperthyroidism, we have excessive thyroid hormones. You have excess T3, T4. And what we know is that T3 and T4 manage metabolism. So with hyperthyroidism, I'm going to have increased or elevated T3, T4. You may have increased calcitonin. I imagine you would. Um, it just that doesn't get a whole lot of like press or play. So when generally when folks are talking about hyperthyroidism, they really focus on the metabolism portion of it. I can tell you that calcium is an element that you want to watch on patients, either if they have hyper or hypothyroidism because of the calcitonin relationship. But again, it's not as big of an issue as electrolytes become when we talk about the adrenal disorders. So let's follow the logic. I have increased T3 and T4, therefore I have an increased metabolism, which means that the fuel that I consume is going to get burned much more effectively and I'm much more likely to have weight loss. Again, if we talk about uh, metabolism and if I, my, my, yeah, excuse me, my metabolism is running at an increased rate, I would expect that my vital signs are also going to be increased. So I'm going to have an increased respiratory, or increased heart rate. I'm probably going to have an increased blood pressure. And I'm going to have possibly an increased respiratory rate. When you start to get into uh, thyroid emergencies, like thyroid storm, then you also have an increased temperature. Okay, and speaking of temperature, because your car, because the motor that's driving your car and your metabolism is running high, okay, you're much more likely to have intolerance of heat. For someone who is hypermetabolic, who has excessive metabolism, you would expect them to have flushed and sweaty skin. You would also expect someone to have thinning hair, and I don't have a great explanation for this one. The best way I can say is, or sometimes it's fine hair, um, that hypermetabolism hyper interferes with uh, production of hair follicles. I don't know. It's generally not something that's focused on, okay, but it, it is, can be an effect of it. As far as nails go, this is another one that I don't have a great explanation for. Uh, I did Google it because they talk about clubbing of fingers. And Google didn't really help me because it talks about autoimmune issues and problems with antibodies. So I think just understanding the clubbing of fingers, if you're looking for an in-depth explanation, there's plenty of scientific articles out there on Google, uh, but it's really beyond what you need to know for the scope of this lesson and this course. As far as eyes, now, interestingly, with hyperthyroidism, you have an increased accumulation of fat deposits behind the eye, which results in a forward protrusion of the eyes and the inability to close the eyes completely. We call that exothalmos. And I, did I spell that right? I didn't, I missed my O here. Hold on, exothalmos. And I know I was watching the Nurse Mike video yesterday on it, and they actually mentioned that uh, you need to protect the eyes. So because the patient is not able to close their eyes completely, uh, making sure that the eyes are covered if they're in a position where they're sleeping or they're not, um, you know, they're going under anesthesia, it's, it's making sure to protect the eyes. So a goiter, a goiter is an, it basically an enlarged thyroid gland and it shows as a lump on the neck. And a goiter can happen actually in both both sides of this, either hyper or hypothyroidism. With hypothyroidism, yes, you can have a goiter. And some of it is just that increased demand for thyroid hormone results in a hyper or a um, hypertrophic, uh, you know, or the increased production results in a hypertrophic thyroid gland. So you can have a goiter for hyperthyroidism. As expected, 
hypermetabolism, everything's running quickly, including your bowels. So while someone with hyperthyroidism might be able to eat whatever they want and still lose weight, the downside is diarrheal stools. So you know, that, that is a problem. As far as energy levels go, okay, and sleep patients with hyperthyroidism are like to, likely to experience insomnia. Okay, they may have a higher energy level. Okay, ultimately they may end up developing fatigue just because they run out of fuel, but sleep is a lot more difficult because they can't settle and relax. Everything's kind of running hot. So insomnia is much more likely to happen. Cognition wise, okay, even the brain's running a little bit fast. It's almost like the brain is overstimulated and you can have a decreased attention span. Mood and affect. Think about hyperstimulation or overstimulation, okay? You have nervousness and irritability. You can have what's called emotional lability, meaning that your, your emotions are very, very difficult to control, and maybe you're laughing one minute and crying the next. For women, you can have amenorrhea and decreased fertility. So there's a lot of different signs and symptoms from having a hypermetabolism. So let's talk a little bit about treatments. So with any endocrine disorder, your treatments are either going to be focused on suppressing an elevated hormone or adding what's missing. So in this case, we need to suppress an elevated hormone. And there's two meds I want to talk about, and then there's a couple other things that I want to talk about. And actually, I may need to add a column to this. So first of all, you've got tapazole, which is also methimazole. You've got PTU, which is also known as propothiouracil. Try and type that when you're trying to. There you go. And I know that Dr. Cato discussed these medications in class. I believe PTU is the one that is safe to use for pregnant people. Then you've got forms of iodine. So you can have potassium iodide. Or radioactive iodine. So let's talk a little bit about iodine. The thyroid gland needs iodine to function. However, too much iodine can actually suppress thyroid hormone production. So potassium iodide can actually suppress thyroid hormone production. I call it too much of a good thing. Like one piece of cake is great, but if you eat the whole cake, okay, it's gonna, it's definitely not gonna be good for you. Okay, not a great analogy, but I got cake on the brain right now. Radioactive iodine, basically, they radioactively tag iodine and they give it to the patient. The thyroid will absorb iodine in no matter what the form. And so it absorbs the radioactive iodine. And actually, the thyroid gland around where that iodine is absorbed will start to kill off from the radioactivity. So if you think about somebody that gets brachytherapy for cancer, okay, similar things apply. If someone gets radioactive iodine, it, a lot of the same rules apply that would happen with someone with brachytherapy. And oftentimes radioactive iodine is something they may do prior to removing the thyroid gland. So you can also have a thyroidectomy where they actually remove the thyroid gland altogether. Now, obviously, if they remove the thyroid gland, then you're going to be thrown over to the other side of the column. Let's talk about the thyroid emergency related to hyperthyroidism, and that is called thyrotoxicosis or thyroid storm. or thyrotoxic crisis is another one you may hear it's called. So thyroid storm or thyrotoxic crisis. Okay, and this is often seen after a thyroidectomy. And what the reason they, th they think it happens is as they're removing the thyroid from the body, manipulating that gland may push excessive amounts of T3, T4 into the system. So patients with thyroid storm are gonna have a massive influx of the hormones that drive metabolism and you're gonna see profound or severely elevated, I wrote profound on my key here, 
profound or elevated um, hypertension. Okay, you're going to have severely elevated tachycardia. So we're talking about like blood pressures like 250 over 200, and maybe your heart rate's up into the 180s, 190s, and you're going to have elevated temps too. There's an increased risk for seizures with this. Okay, so you might see confusion in seizures. And treatment of thyroid storm. Okay, now normally you would think about treating with your antithyroid meds, and they may give antithyroid meds, but ultimately this is an unstable patient. So if a patient's having thyroid storm, my priority is to stabilize this patient. So I'm going to give something that's going to bring down that heart rate and blood pressure a little more quickly because the PTU and the tapazole, even if you give it IV, okay, it takes a little bit longer to work. So we're not that we're not going to do that, but it's not our priority medication. My priority medication is an IV beta blocker. Okay, and a cooling blanket. to help stabilize the patient. Okay, not to say that you're not going to give the antithyroid meds, they probably will. However, my priority again is to stabilize the patient. So IV beta blockers and a cooling blanket. And then if we scroll down here and you'll know on the back of this form, you've got your little your cartoons. The autoimmune form of hyperthyroidism is Graves' disease. And with Graves' disease, you develop autoantibodies. And so your body develops an antibody that happens to look just like TSH. So these autoantibodies will attach themselves to the thyroid receptor sites. The thyroid thinks it's excessive, thinks it's getting extra TSH, and so it makes more thyroid hormone. And so the autoimmune form is basically you have an imposter in there, and the imposter is an antibody that looks just like TSH. And that that basically stimulates the thyroid to produce more thyroid hormone. I'm going to pause the video here because it's going to time out at 15 minutes. And when I tune back in, we'll talk about the other side of the column, which is hypothyroidism. Thank you for listening.